Okay, I wanted to know which AA batteries are worth your money, so I performed a bunch of different tests and I found out that it's not any of these. I purchased 37 different battery packs representing four distinct types. I spent months putting each through three separate tests designed to give as accurate and comprehensive an overview of all the options as possible. Then I compared those test results with the prices for each of these batteries to determine which was the best value. And I made all that information available to you for free in a public spreadsheet that I will link down below. Now the point of this video is to explain the differences between these battery technologies and to make easy and clear recommendations for you. So let's get into it. Every battery went through three tests, two with my computerized battery analyzer, which measures the battery's capacity under load, and one with my Convoy T3 flashlight, which gives a good understanding of real-world usage. The first CBA test was done at a medium level 250 milliamps to give a baseline performance. Most batteries will run around eight hours at this level. The next test was at a much higher two amps, which really shows the difference between certain cells. For example, most alkalines run for 20 minutes at this level, while most nickel metal hydride cells can handle this load for about an hour. I then loaded each battery into the high-powered flashlight, measured the resulting lumens, and then graphed the output as the battery ran down to zero. You'll notice that each battery behaves differently, with some holding their output evenly before dying and others gradually petering out until they hit zero. It's worth inspecting the graphs for each battery, but in order to simplify things, I decided on a cutoff point at 55% of initial output. I then took this runtime and divided it by the cost per battery to get a value ranking which was divided again by the number of cycles you get out of each rechargeable cell. So, in theory, this list should help you get the most runtime for your money. Alkaline batteries. These are the most popular. However, I don't believe that they deserve your money. These are cheap, disposable batteries, which run at 1.5 volts, so they'll work well in just about any electronics you put them in. However, they perform very poorly and are prone to leakage, which can destroy your electronics. You'll quickly see that these fall short in just about every regard compared to these other battery technologies. Now, in the flashlight test, alkalines will hold steady for a few minutes, then they drop off pretty hard. However, the decline lasts a while before they actually hit zero, so you will get some pretty long run times if you don't mind a dim flashlight. These batteries also performed very poorly under high current loads, and they fell off gradually in all of the CBA tests. Another major problem is leaking. Just due to the nature of alkalines, they're always inevitably going to leak. While they are good for low drain applications, if left in a device for an extended period of time, they will end up leaking and ruining your stuff, which sucks. Nickel metal hydride batteries are also quite common. These are rechargeable cells that have many charge cycles and which perform really well under high current draw applications. However, they do have a slightly lower nominal voltage than the alkalines, which can cause compatibility issues in some devices. You'll see that these perform far better in the flashlight, maintaining a steady output for a longer period of time, uh, and they run much longer overall than the alkalines do. Similarly, in the CBA tests, you'll see that these run for longer and the voltage is held steady throughout the run. They also tend to show little difference between the high and low current draw tests. As great as these batteries are, not all are created equal. Some, for example, have fewer charge cycles than others. Some don't perform as well, such as these ones. Some use what's called a dry chemistry, which means they will never leak. One issue that you can run into with a few nickel metal hydride batteries as well is that they will have a high self-discharge, meaning they have a low shelf life. They will have to be recharged if not used for an extended period of time. So lithium iron disulfide or lithium primary batteries are very unique. They perform extremely well, especially under a variety of temperature conditions, but they are disposable. Their voltage makes them a suitable drop-in replacement for alkaline batteries, and they can last an extremely long time in storage, up to 20 years. However, due to their high cost and non-rechargeable nature, I only recommend these for uh, very niche use cases, such as long-term emergency storage, operation in extreme cold temperatures, or perhaps use in very low drain applications for an extended period of time. 
All of these batteries performed well in the flashlight, only barely falling in output before dying. They didn't hold their voltage as well in the CBA tests as the nickel metal hydride did, but they provide larger capacities overall. While quite expensive, I do think these are really great for certain niche use cases. Lithium ion double A's are the exciting new contender on the scene. These are really interesting. This is essentially the same battery tech that you find in most electronics today. Smartphones, Teslas, etc. But because that voltage won't work in the same devices as an alkaline, these have been fitted with a small circuit that bucks the voltage down to make these completely compatible with all the same devices as the rest of these. These perform extremely well. They have very good high drain performance and because they're rechargeable, really good lifetime value. However, there are some downsides. For example, they do require specialized chargers to be used and they, because they're lithium ion, they could potentially be a fire hazard if misused. And they also tend to have a high self drain. Now they do perform very well, but in my tests, the results were very similar to what I got with most of the nickel metal hydride cells which means that these are very good, but not exactly revolutionary. Now, out of all of the alkalines that I tested, the best performer was the Duracell Power Boost. This did perform the best in my tests, and it's actually one of the best values. Now, the best value was the Costco Kirkland Signature. Now, you can only buy this battery if you have a Costco membership, but it comes in a 48 pack for $16 and it performs pretty well, so this is definitely the best value of the bunch. If you can't get a hold of these, I think the next best value option is the E-Circuit branded RED that I got at Dollar Tree. This is good for low drain applications, doesn't perform well under high drain applications, but because it's so cheap, it's a pretty decent value option. Now, its blue wrapped brethren are the worst performing battery that I tested by a significant margin. These are absolutely terrible and a complete waste of money. So avoid these at all costs. And the rest of these are not very good. All right, the most famous nickel metal hydride battery is going to be this, the white wrapped Panasonic Eneloop. These are a bit pricey, but they do offer excellent performance on a single charge. They have a very long lifespan with over 2000 charge cycles available, and they have a non-leaking dry chemistry. Between their great performance and their really long lifespan that offers a great value over time, this is my number one recommended AA battery across the board. It's really, really good. Now for a bit less money, you can get the Power Owl 2800. This performs pretty similarly to the Eneloop on a single charge. And although it does have about half the total lifespan, it also includes standard a charger, which in my opinion makes this a really good value focused option. Now pretty much all nickel metal hydride batteries are good, but the worst came from the Energizer and Rayovac brands. Confusingly, Energizer offers three different versions of their rechargeable batteries. And while a couple of them come with chargers, I don't think any of them are really good enough to be worth considering. On the other hand, the Duracell Recharge was actually the best performing nickel metal hydride battery of all of these. They're a bit pricey, um, but they did a very good job in all of my tests. You see, most nickel metal hydride batteries come in two versions. A standard version, which has a lower lifespan and more charge cycles, that'd be this one, and a higher capacity version, which performs better on a single charge, but has half or less as many charge cycles over its entire lifetime. The more expensive cells don't have enough extra capacity to justify the higher cost and lower lifespan, in my opinion. For example, the white wrapped Panasonic Eneloop has a smaller capacity than the black wrapped Panasonic Eneloop Pro. This has about 2100 cycles and this only has about 400 charge cycles. Between that and its significantly higher cost, I really just don't recommend the Panasonic Eneloop Pro. However, if this kind of performance is what you want, I would recommend instead either the Duracell Recharge or even more, I like the IKEA Lada 2450. I think this was the best value, high capacity nickel metal hydride available, and it performed pretty much the same as the Eneloop Pro and Duracell Recharge. Finally, if you're looking for a charger, that, that's a whole other topic, but I will link some in the description that I think are gonna be a really good value. Um, they are gonna cost a little bit more upfront, but it's gonna be worthwhile in the long run. Lithium iron disulfide batteries, I only have five of them here, and they all perform pretty much the same. The only ones you're gonna find in store are the Energizer Ultimate Lithium. 
And I mean, these again performed about the same, but they were more expensive than the others. So I don't really recommend them. Uh, although they are the most easily available if you can get them in stores. Uh, of these ones here, the only ones that really performed meaningfully better than the others were the Power Owl disposable lithium batteries. These were actually quite good. They came out to 3,500 milliamp hours and did 121 minutes of runtime in the flashlight. That makes this the single best performing AA battery out of all of the ones that I tested. However, for all of these, I only recommend them for certain very niche use cases. Nearly every lithium ion AA on the market appears to be pretty much the same, they just have different wrappings. I have here the three main ones that you're gonna see, a 3000 milliwatt hour model, a 3500 milliwatt hour model, and a 3600 milliwatt hour model. These I got from Amazon. The exception to that paradigm is gonna be this Coast Zithian X battery is what they call it. I got this from Costco and it does appear to be a unique cell. Now this is interesting because uh, these Coast batteries come with a small USB-C charging port on the top. These EBL 3000 milliwatt hour ones that I got come with this kind of standard bay charger. The 3500 milliwatt hour batteries, I just got these ones that have this really interesting flat charger that you put the battery down into like that. And then these Z-Path branded batteries come with this like AirPod style charging case, which I actually really like. The thing to know about these batteries is they are going to require a very specific type of charger to work. So most of them will come with these chargers, which is nice, um, but just keep that in mind. Comparing the two EBL batteries, uh, the lower capacity three watt hour cell, this red one, held a nice consistent performance, while the higher capacity cell did run longer, uh, but it displayed some odd fluctuations in output. It wasn't super stable, as you'll see on the graph. It actually hit our flashlight cutoff point first, interestingly enough, despite running longer on the CBA. However, this does still get my recommendation for being actually cheaper and having a longer overall lifespan. Next, we pit the ZPath 3600 and the Coast uh, Zithian X batteries. Um, the 3600 milliwatt hour battery held flat for a long time while having a solid capacity. Surprisingly, the Coast actually performed better in the CBA test but worse than the flashlight test. This is a tough one to call, but for me, the deciding factor is the cheaper price of the Z-Path battery. I think overall, it just comes out to be a better value. I do think that the lifespan claim for this is probably exaggerated, but even if we cut that in half, this actually still represents one of the best lifetime values on this list. It's really good. And while lithium ion battery chemistry is very well proven, this whole deal with putting a buck circuit on top of the cell is kind of a new thing. So I do think we're gonna see a lot more options pop up over time and, and things could definitely change there. If you want a closer look at the data from my tests, please check out the public spreadsheet that will be linked in the description of this video. It's gonna have detailed information for the tests from all of these batteries. It's also going to contain links to purchase most of these on Amazon. So if you use those links, it will help support this channel. Now, depending on where you live, and the time that you're seeing this, the prices are going to fluctuate. So we've made it easy for you to calculate the specific value for your purchase. Just go to the spreadsheet and click on copy or make a download, and then plug in the numbers for the battery count and dollar value for your specific purchase. And it will automatically calculate the value in dollars per minute of runtime. For most people, most of the time, I do recommend nickel metal hydride batteries. They offer the best combination of value, performance, reliability, and easy usability. In particular, I most like the white wrapped Eneloop cells and the Power Owl nickel metal hydrides. They're a really good option. Next, I recommend the lithium ion rechargeable AA's. They offer similar great value and great performance without having any voltage compatibility issues. Of the bunch, I, I think really any of them are gonna be good, but I most liked the 3600 milliwatt hour versions. The disposable lithium primary cells are very niche, and for most people I don't recommend them, but for certain use cases, they can be really helpful. Of the bunch, I most liked the Power Owl cells. They are really great. Now alkalines, as you can see, they're just much worse than all of the other options, and I really just recommend that you avoid them. But if you do want to buy alkalines, you can check out our public spreadsheet to see which will work best for you. All right, so that's a rundown of all of the testing that I did for this video. Again, be sure to check out the link in the description for the public spreadsheet. Now, if you want more information 
on specifically alkalines versus nickel metal hydrides and why I think these are the best batteries, um, check out this video that does a detailed rundown of that topic.